Hello everybody, happy Monday afternoon, hope yours is going well, and we have a new Seahawks video today, but before we get into the football content, I want to celebrate a major subscriber milestone for me. We have now officially hit 1,300 subscribers to the channel. I want to thank all my subscribers, old and new. Hopefully we can get to maybe 1,500 by the end of October at the rate we're going, it seems possible. Maybe we'll get to something like 2,000 by the end of the season. Who knows? This channel is growing faster than it ever has, and let's just keep on pushing it. I'll keep on making content. Hopefully you guys keep appreciating the content and you keep subscribing, and again, if you guys were not watching my videos, I would not be making them, so 1,300 subs. Never thought I'd get here, but uh, let's, let's keep on pushing. All right, so today is a slightly different video. Usually when I make these videos, I'm trying to inform people of something that I'm noticing with the team that, you know, maybe I don't like it or maybe I really do like it or something I want them to do more of or less of. Uh, I'm trying to say don't let the narrative get in the way of these numbers because these numbers that I'm looking at are telling me one thing, but I understand that a lot of people are thinking another thing. This is not that video. This video is... We're 4-0, everything's going great. Now, not everything, but a lot of things are going great. The team is playing well, the team is getting it done. Um, there's a lot to be excited about, and I want to celebrate what we have on offense. So this video is gonna be about the offense, and rather than telling you, we need to do this, we need to do that, we need to go get, th get this guy, we need to go get that guy, this is going to be a video where I just talk about how historically good this offense has a chance to be after four games and how we are sitting on not only the best offense in franchise history but one of the best offenses in the history of the NFL. So this video took a lot of time to research. I had a lot of fun with numbers. Um, there's definitely some uh, finagling here in order to build the narrative that I'm going for. You'll definitely see some curious statistics on our way but um, yeah, let's go ahead and jump in. These are projections, and I know projections are hard, guys. I know projections are funky. I know that projections can be kind of difficult to, to, to use because you end up with a lot of numbers that end up not coming even close to being true. And I know people are going to say, like, hey, it's only been four games. You can't project a 16-game season off of four games. Well, it is 25% of the season. We played a big chunk of the year already, 25%. So I feel like we can learn some stuff from that. I feel like we can, um, you know, extrapolate some stuff from what we've seen through four games. And people are going to say, hey, we're going to play the Bills, and they have a good defense, and the weather's going to be bad in that game. We got a game against the Redskins, and they have their crappy FedEx field. We still have to play a game in San Francisco on their crappy field. You know the offense is going to fall off in those games, and... You probably have a point. At the same time, though, remember, a lot of our games in the last part of the season are against bad teams like the Giants and the Jets. Uh, the Eagles look like they might be that kind of team. The Vikings next week, not only are the Vikings not a good team, they have a terrible secondary. So there's also going to be an opportunity for this offense, especially this passing attack, which is the main focal point of this video, to really pile it up. And um, against the, the, the Dolphins, we put up 31 points, and we didn't even play that well. So I still think that these projections, while they are just projections and we're mostly just having fun in this video, some of this stuff can really happen if you just take a look at the schedule. So let's dive in here. Let's take a look at some of the stuff that I, that, that I noticed when I was studying this offense today. We are on pace for 568 points in 2020. And by the way, not a one of the points we've scored so far have been defensive or special team scores. Just to give you some perspective, our current team record for most points scored in a season is 452. Set in the 2005 season where Sean Alexander won MVP. So we are on pace to shatter our old franchise points record by 100 plus points, almost 120 points. And just for perspective, is on a grand scale, the league record is 606 with the 2013 Denver Broncos. So there have been only two teams in the history of the NFL that have scored more points than 568. So if we hold up our pace with points, which I got to tell you, barring injury, I'm feeling pretty good about it. 
That would be the third highest scoring offense in NFL history, behind only the 2013 Broncos and the 2007 Patriots. And on top of that, take a look at this. The offense has scored 19 touchdowns through four games on pace for 76. The team record is 54 in 2005, if you take out the defensive and special teams touchdowns. The league record on offense is 71 by the 2013 Broncos. We are on pace to easily break the league record for most touchdowns in a season by an offense. That is efficiency. That is how we're able to do this without piling up a 500 yards every game. We're not even one of the top teams in the league this season in terms of yards, but look at how often we're hitting pay dirt. A couple of those possessions against the Dolphins were the first time all season where the offense moved the ball and got nothing out of it. Okay, turnovers. We are on pace to turn the ball over 12 times this season, which is right in line with the franchise record for a low turnover count. We had 11 turnovers two years ago in 2018. So we are on pace to basically equal the team record for fewest turnovers in a 16-game season. The league record is eight, which was set last year by the Saints. Somehow they played 16 games and only turned it over eight times. And if we were to amass 12 turnovers this season, that would tie us for the fifth fewest in league history by any offense. So absolutely remarkable stuff on a macro scale with this offense. I mean, we're on pace to have some of the most points ever and some of the fewest turnovers ever. It's really amazing what this offense has done in the first four weeks. And I wanted to talk about it in a more historical and grand fashion. So that's the team. Let's get into some of these players because I want us to understand what we have in some of these offensive players and the seasons that they're having so far. And I want this team to understand that they better not waste this because I kind of did this last year with the offense and the offense definitely fell off a little bit after the end point of the season where we had some bad games and um, a lot of the things that I was seeing early in the season ended up not coming true, but this year we're seeing it even more. Russell Wilson, through four games, is poised to destroy every franchise record and some of the all-time records. Let's take a look at this. 412 completions in one season would shatter his own record from 2016 of 353. He's on pace to shatter his completion record for the team by almost 70 completions. He'll fall well short of where Drew Brees in 2016 did. He Drew Brees is... League record for completions in a season is 471. I don't even think the Saints made the playoffs this year, which is crazy when you think about it. But, uh, yeah, if Wilson can get to 412 completions, we're talking about 25th in NFL history. That's pretty good. That's pretty good given that he doesn't even get to pass the ball as much as a lot of these other guys. And I'll, I'll illustrate that in a moment here. Despite everything I'm about to get into... He's only on pace to throw the ball 548 times. That's not even a franchise record, guys. 2007, Matt Hasselbeck threw the ball 562 times. Not even a franchise record. Certainly not a league record. Look at how many times Matt Stafford threw it, like 45 times a game in 2012. 727 passing attempts. If Wilson keeps up this pace, he will be... Not even in the top 180 of most pass attempts in one season. Actually, with the way a lot of the other quarterbacks in the league are playing, he might not end up being in the top 200, and he's still doing all this. Completion percentage. He's currently on pace to shatter the team record, which is his own record of 68.1%, and he's on pace to break the all-time record in 2018 from Drew Brees of 744 He's on pace to be the first quarterback in NFL history to complete over three quarters of his passes. And I know people are going to say the bad games are coming, and maybe so. But you also got to remember, his receivers are dropping passes. Greg Olson has two drops already. DK Metcalf has probably like four drops, depending on how you choose to count them. Uh, Lockett's actually got like two or three drops already, which is shocking. <coughs> so that, there's another way to look at that. So yeah, he's on pace to break the record for completion percentage in a season. 
passing yards. He's on pace to break 5,000, and we've certainly never had a player in franchise history break 5,000. We barely had players break 4,000. If Wilson keeps this up, and it seems reasonable to expect that he, for the most part, can, there are only a couple games this year that seem like they're going to stymie him a little bit, he's going to break his record from 2016 by close to 1,000 yards, 900 full yards more. That's a month of half of mediocre football worth of yards. And he'll get close to the all-time record, which is almost 5,500 set by Peyton Manning in 2013. If he keeps this pace up, he will reach 7th in NFL history all-time for single-season passing yards. Touchdowns. He only threw two touchdowns last week against the Dolphins. Off game by his standard so far this year, and yet here we are. He's on pace for 64, and I know we played this game with Mahomes last year, but, you know, Mahomes plays in Arrowhead. Mahomes has to play, had to play a game in Foxborough. It wasn't an easy path for him. He missed a couple games, I think, so he missed like two and a half games, so we're going to play this game because if there's one thing we know about Wilson, it's that he doesn't miss very many snaps. He's on pace to almost double his personal record and franchise record of 35. This is freaky stuff. He's already thrown about half as many touchdowns as he threw in his best ever touchdown season in 2018. Just, just, let's appreciate this while it's here. And of course, he's on pace to shatter the old record of 55 by Peyton Manning in 2013. Easily an all-time record if he keeps this up. Easy. Touchdown percentage, almost 12%. Almost 12%. 11.7%. Franchise record was two years ago, Wilson, 8.2. It's almost comical. And this comes after a game where he only threw two touchdowns because we ran the ball in on the goal line a couple times. I understand there's variance. I understand he threw a bunch of one-yard touchdowns against the Cowboys, but it goes the other way too sometimes. The record, most of the record holders in this category come from the 40s and 50s and 60s before the Super Bowl, before the modern era. Record is 1943 Sid Luckman with almost 14%, which is disgusting. Wilson would be second if he upheld this touchdown percentage. The modern record, however, was set by Peyton Manning in 2004 with 9.9%. So he would shatter the modern record. Shatter it. First downs in a season. He's on pace for 232 passing first downs in 2020 easily breaking the old record of just over 200 by Hasselbeck in 2007. The record, as near as I can tell, is 291 by Peyton Manning in 2013. I don't know where this places Wilson historically, but it's still a pretty friggin' impressive number, especially when you consider he's got the best deep ball in the league, so a lot of his first downs go for long touchdowns compared to Peyton Manning in 2013, who was, relatively speaking, a little bit more of a precision quarterback. Yards per attempt, 9.4 yards per attempt so far. The old record is 8.8, .8, Dave Craig in 1983. On pace to easily break that. The all-time record is almost 11 by 1943 Sid Luckman. What was 1943 Sid Luckman on, man? His name came up over and over again when I was researching this video. So if there are any old, old Bears fans in the comment section that want to let me know what he was on in 1943, let me know. Even with most of the top record holders in this category playing before the Super Bowl era, if Wilson keeps this up, that is the 11th best season in NFL history by yards per attempt. The modern record, by the way, is actually Kurt Warner, who posted 9.9 .9 in 2000. So Wilson could be within spitting distance of that if he keeps this up. QB rating, I'm not a big fan of QB rating and QBR, but it's a flawed stat. It's not a, an atrocious stat. And Wilson's currently on pace to shatter not only his own team record of 111, he's on pace to shatter the NFL record of 122.5 by Aaron Rodgers in 2011. He's on pace to post 137 QB rating almost. Very close to perfection. And he's done it over a month of football. And tougher games are coming, but also easier games are coming at the same time. QBR. 
QBR, 87.3 through four games. To give you guys some understanding of how much better that is than the best Wilson has ever done, in 2012, his QBR was not even 73. The all-time record is by 2007 Tom Brady, which is just a shade above what this is, 88.5. The only two QBs who have posted a QBR over a season higher than 87.3 are 07 Brady and 06 Manning. And I want to throw this in as well, guys. Wilson is doing more with his legs than any previous big air attack quarterback in NFL history. I compared him to every other quarterback who has thrown for 5,000 yards, as Wilson is currently on pace to do. And Wilson's on pace to run the ball 72 times for 380 yards with a 5.3 yards per carry average. Of the QBs who have thrown for 5,000 yards in a season, the, only, the record currently belongs to Pat Mahomes, who rushed 60 times for 272 yards, 4.5 yards a carry. So if Wilson keeps these numbers up, which I think he can, if he continues to throw for big yards and gets to 5,000, he will set the record for rushing stats for a QB who threw the ball for 5,000 yards. So let's appreciate what we have right now going with Wilson. I know everybody knows he's great, but I wanted to post these statistical comparisons so we understand how great he's playing right now. Every meaningful record that the Seahawks have is going to be destroyed, and a lot of the league records are going to be beaten or challenged if he keeps this up. So, you know, eat, eat it up, guys. Eat it up. But I want to say more. Let's continue to talk about how special this offense has been through a month and how special it could be by the end. I want to talk about Chris Carson because his numbers are not going to be overwhelming by the end of this season. But I think he has reimagined himself into a phenomenal, versatile, do-it-all running back who's getting involved in the offense in many ways. And he may not get to 1,000 rushing yards this year, but I want to highlight something here. And these numbers by themselves are not going to sound crazy, but bear with me until the end. Chris Carson is on pace for exactly 60 pass receptions which, by the way, almost breaks the record for a running back in Seahawks franchise history. R Ricky Waters had 63 in 2000. John Williams was a fullback, but he did have 76 in 1989. So he's not going to break a team record there. He's certainly not going to break the all-time record. He's going to maybe be 50% of the way there. He's on pace for 1,400 scrimmage yards, which is not even close to a team record, once again, and certainly not close to a NFL record. And he's on pace for 20 touchdowns, again, not particularly close to any record, although that would be 20th all-time, tied for 20th. But if he can do those three things, which he is currently on pace to do exactly, and by the way, that was with missing about a quarter worth of football because of two injuries, he would be the eighth running back in NFL history to total those amounts in one season. 60 receptions, 1,400 yards, and 20 touchdowns. On a pass-first team that has adapted since he got here, that has really changed the way they're doing things since he got was put in the starting role back in 2018, he has found a way to continue to make big contributions. And if you look at the other running backs who have achieved this, 60 catches, 1,400 yards, and 20 touchdowns, it's guys like Emmett Smith and David Johnson during his pseudo-MVP year. It, it's pretty phenomenal company to keep. So I want to salute Chris Carson for finding a way to make big contributions to this team, even when we're not running the ball as much as we used to. All right. DK Metcalf is next. And I want to draw attention to two things that he's doing this year that are potentially historically good. First is his receiving yards. As you guys know, he's averaging over 100 yards a game, and he's not even got it all together, and we know it. He's doing big mistakes in every game, too. He's dropping passes, dropping easy catches. He, he had the fumble at the goal line. He's not a perfect player at all, and he's still completely dominant on pace for 1,612 receiving yards after four flawed games. That's how good this guy is. That would shatter the record by a month's worth of production. 85 large and could, didn't even get to 1,300 yards, and that's the franchise record. 
Metcalf could fall off and still easily pass that. Now, the all-time record, probably out of his reach. I will admit that. Calvin Johnson fell a uh, couple catches shy of two grand in 2012, but this yard total by itself would be 20th all-time. And I also want to talk about his yards per reception, because here, through four games, he has been truly special. Now, will it come back to earth a little bit? Probably. But he has shown a propensity to make big plays that I have not seen from a Seahawks receiver in a very, very long time, maybe ever. So there's a reason why this number is high, and I don't see any reason to believe it's going to crash. 25.2 yards per reception. The team record, by the way, is not even 19. 1979 Steve Largent, 18.7. The all-time record for a receiver who caught at least 50 passes in a season, which Metcalf is well on pace to do, is 24 yards per catch by Eddie Brown in 1988. I think he was a Bengal. So Metcalf is on pace to break that record, not just be one of the top people, but to break it. And also, he is currently on pace to get to 1,600 yards despite only bringing in 64 catches because of this insane yard per reception number. That would break the record for fewest catches to get to 1,600 yards in a season. The current record is 69 by Lance Alworth in 1965, and the modern record is 82 catches by 2000 Torrey Holt. So Metcalf is doing maximum damage with his reception so far, and he's on pace to have a historically productive season on a relatively few number of receptions. This is some truly incredible stuff, and... Again, I just want to make sure we're all appreciating it the way it needs to be appreciated. That's why I'm making this video. That's why I'm just having fun today. All right. Tyler Lockett. Let's not forget about him. Now, in my opinion, even though Metcalf is not as reliable as Lockett, he's not as smart as Lockett maybe, Metcalf has clearly supplanted Lockett as the number one receiver on this team. So, to me, Lockett is a clear number two just because he's not as physically imposing and scary for opposing defenses. Now, Lockett catches more passes. I understand that. Lockett's going to catch more passes this season. When uh, push comes to shove, we may rely on him a little more. But Metcalf, I believe, is our number one receiver. So let's take a look at Lockett partially through the lens of a number two receiver. He's on pace like he was last year, and then he got hurt fell off a little bit. It didn't work out exactly the way we wanted. On pace for over 100 receptions. We've never had one of those. The record for the team is 94 by Bobby Engram in 07 and 2016 Doug Baldwin. So 104 receptions would easily shatter that. Um, the, obviously, he's nowhere close to the league record set last year. Michael Thomas, 149. This would put him tied for 68th all-time in receptions. Not overly impressive, but would be the best any Seahawk receiver has ever done, and not particularly close, so okay. But let's do receiving yards, and let's do it remembering that Lockett is effectively our number two receiver now, and let's compare him to other secondary receivers that we've had and other teams have had. As a secondary receiver, he's on pace for about 1,200 receiving yards, just shy of of 1,200 receiving yards, and that comes with the drops that he's already had, which is honestly more than you would usually expect Tyler to have. He's had two or three drops already. We don't usually see him drop two or three passes over the course of a whole season, and he's still on pace for about 1,200 yards. The most yards I could find a Seahawks team got out of a secondary receiver in their franchise history was last year. DK Metcalf had 900. I could not find another secondary receiver who totaled that many yards. The league record for a number two receiver, as near as I could tell, was 14 and 88. 14 88 by Perriman, uh, Brent Perriman of the Detroit Lions in 1995, who was the secondary receiver to the great Herman Moore. So there are definitely some number two receivers you can find who had more than 1,200 yards. Uh, Anquan Bolden in 2005, Emmanuel Sanders in 2014, I think. But among number two receivers, this would be very impressive. 
and it would be by far the best this team has ever seen. And finally, let's do receiving touchdowns because through four games, he's absolutely roasting the end zone. He's got four touchdowns on pace for 16, one a game. The team record is 14, so he's on pace to break that, set by 2016 Doug Baldwin. The all-time record is probably not within his reach. 23 touchdowns by 2007 Randy Moss. I don't think that's happening, but... Among number two receivers, and I had to do a lot of research to find this, I looked, I scanned the whole league, I tried to find which secondary receiver in NFL history caught the most touchdown passes in one season. As near as I can tell, the answer is Chris Carter in 1999, who caught 13. So he might be the, he might set the record for most end zone celebrations for a secondary receiver. If you want to read anything into that stat... I welcome you to do it. If not, then that's okay. But to me, that means something because it's not like Metcalf isn't scoring touchdowns too. Okay, let's talk about David Moore because David Moore, he may very well be forgotten in a couple months when we get Josh Gordon back. I don't know. His role will be diminished when David Moore gets back on that field. But I want to draw attention to how well he's played through four games. He's on pace for 40 receptions as a third receiver. And once again, I went back through Seahawks franchise history. Which tertiary receiver had done the most damage for us? Who was our best ever third receiver? As near as I could tell, the best we had ever done for a third receiver was 52 receptions by Bobby Engram in 2003. So he's in that ballpark, not quite there. You can also find a couple other seasons from tertiary receivers who did a little bit, bit, bit better, like uh, Nate Burleson, I think, had a few more catches. Maybe Joe Juravicious did it one year. I can't remember for sure. But um, he's not particularly close to the franchise record or the all-time record of 73 by 2013 Wes Welker. But 40 catches for a receiver, a third receiver on a team with number ones and number twos who are killing it like this, that doesn't come around that often. Scrimmage yards. 740 scrimmage yards is his pace after four games. And that's remarkable because we've never had a tertiary receiver go over 700 yards in a season from scrimmage. The closest we ever came was 698 by Nate Burleson in 2007. Most of the time our tertiary receivers don't really get that many yards after the catch. They don't get big plays. Nate Burleson was a rare exception to that. But right now David Moore is absolutely killing it in terms of his production per touch. Now, the record all-time is almost 1,100 by Brandon Stokely in 04, but you got to say, for an offense like this, 740 yards from scrimmage from a tertiary receiver, that's better than anybody could have hoped for. And he may not get there because Josh Gordon gets back. I don't know what's going to happen. He might just fall off on his own because he's not necessarily the greatest player of all time. I get that. But we're having fun with projections today, guys. That's, that's what I'm going to say. He's on pace for eight receiving touchdowns after four games. Will he keep that up? I don't know. I, I, I like David Moore. I think he's a good player. I think he has a nose for the end zone. He's got a lot of yard after the catch talent. Don't count him out. The only tertiary receiver I could find who caught more than eight touchdown passes for us in a season was Nate Burleson in 2007, who caught nine. Now, I did also find Brandon Stokely and Wesley Welker playing with Peyton Manning in 04 in 2013, who caught 10 as tertiary receivers. But that would mean that David Moore is in very good company, right up there with some of the most productive tertiary receivers in NFL history. And finally, I don't know if this is going to hold, but 91% of his targets are being caught right now. 91% of targets thrown at David Moore are being caught. Not only would that shatter the overall team record, which is currently 81.4 by 2018 Tyler Lockett, that would actually shatter the record of any receiver ever who caught at least 40 passes if he keeps all this up. The current record for a receiver, a wide receiver, who caught at least 40 passes is 85% by Michael Thomas in 2018. Again, these are somewhat obscure stats. I don't want to pretend like these guys are better than they are, but they are doing some absolutely killer stuff, and I want to draw attention to it. And finally, I want to talk about Greg Olson here because he's not exactly had the greatest couple of games to start. He was invisible against the Patriots. In fact, he was a net negative against the Patriots. Didn't do much against the Cowboys either until the end of the game, but 
He's producing and he's moving the chains on third down. I think Greg Olson's played a really nice start to the season overall. Couple of holes, but nothing that I can't get over. He's on pace for 56 catches, even with, um, you know, maybe two or three drops already. 56 catches on pace. Now, he's not going to break the team record, I'm sure. I mean, he's an old guy. He might wear down as it is. The team record of 65 is safe. But I wanted to point this out, and this, this actually interested me. He's on pace to break the record for, as near as I can tell, a tight end on an offense that also had two receivers get to 1,200 yards. I looked at every team that had two receivers go over 1,200 yards in a season. And the most productive tight end I could find in terms of receptions was two years ago, Vance McDonald for the Steelers, who caught 50 passes as A.B. and Juju were roasting um, secondaries for over 1,200 yards as well. So 56 would be very notable when you compare it, when you take a look at the receivers he's playing with, because I think we all would rather see the ball go to Metcalf or Lockett than Olsen, but you need those big clutch, crunch time, third down, game on the line catches for first downs every now and then. And Greg Olsen is supplying that, and if he keeps catching passes at this rate, that will be maybe the most prolific t- season any tight end has ever had playing with these kinds of prolific receivers, because... Obviously, we've had tight ends catch 110 passes in a season. 56 is not notable, but in this context, it would be. And then receiving yards. I kind of did the same thing here. 480 receiving yards is his pace through four games. He's not on pace to break a franchise record, much less an all-time record, not at all. But I could only find two tight ends who were able to get to this yardage total despite playing with two receivers that passed 1,200 yards. Vance McDonald in 2018 had 610, and I think Julius Thomas on the Broncos one year had 500 almost, playing with Decker and Demarius and those boys. So yeah, there's some special stuff going on on this offense, and I wanted to make this video, which is not necessarily the most informative or original or, you know, Um, shocking revelation I've ever made on this channel. I wanted to make this video just so we can bask in it and celebrate what this offense is doing through four games. I wanted us to appreciate the players that we have, and I wanted us to know as a franchise we had better not waste this because this kind of offensive production is probably not anything we can count on getting ever again just because it's really hard to get this kind of talent and cohesion together. So I'm going to call it good there. Hope you guys enjoyed my deep dive into the offense through four games. We're on pace to do some special, special stuff. And there are cupcake games a-coming. We've got the Jets. We've got the Giants. We've got the Eagles, who maybe they're turning the corner. We have the Vikings, honestly. I don't really think the Vikings are all that. So enjoy it. Peace out. Go Hawks. See you guys in stream tonight after the games. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to celebrate what this offense has done because this is once-in-a-lifetime stuff quite potentially, and we should all appreciate what this offense has been doing through four games.